Well, what's going to change my perspective is who's playing George Carlin. Oh, that's yeah. huge. Yep. Can yep. I guess? I don't know. I don't they know. They, oh, they, they, haven't, they haven't announced it yet. They haven't announced it. Do you know how hard that's going to be? That's going to be tough. Because, I mean, you got you got to hit his delivery. You got to hit his delivery that because that's yeah. the movie. I will be. I, I'm. He is my favorite comedian of all time. Same. Uh, he is the person that got me into stand up, and there are ways that he delivers. I used to memorize his entire albums because of the way he would deliver, and and things that he would say, and the way that he would do it. He had a very fascinating life. He was very open about his drug use. He was very his wife. He loved his wife, and when she died, his co comedy changed on a dime yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I mentioned it yesterday on on movie talk is that because the I, the reason why i found out about it perry had it flagged for tomorrow because it came in super last yeah, minute yeah and a fan tweeted we were doing live twitter questions and a fan was like just based on the george carlin news what comic do you most want to see a biopic on and i'm like well carlin's certainly up there my answer is still prior because prior and carlin had a similar um that they had a similar career arc in the sense that they were both were cleaner in the late sixties. They were doing like you know because Pryor would he, do a he lot did of Weatherman, yeah, yeah, yeah right? and, and Pryor did a lot of like like television appearances. And then he went underground. He went to San Francisco primarily and emerged as this totally different, raw, honest comic that we all celebrate today. Carlin, same thing, not as dramatic of an arc. No, he but had a dramatic arc. He started. Was, remember, he started as an impressionist on on the. And then right. he, went, he went from getting. He got. But he, it was he, more of a slow evolution, is my point. Yeah, well, I mean, because he went the the route the kind of the route of Lenny Bruce to where because he got in a lot of trouble. They had to mm -hmm. they had to like create like laws. The off seven of his, seven the words seven you can't say on television. Exactly, yeah. and there was so much that he went through. And my favorite line with him, he would talk about the difference between Richard Pryor, and he goes, "Well, see, the way it works is Richard's got me beat." Two to one. He goes, Richard had a heart attack. Then I had a heart attack. Uh, then Richard uh, was, no, no, he said, I got Richard beat two to one. He goes, I had a heart attack. Then Richard had a heart attack. Then I had another heart attack. <laughs> and, and Richard blew himself up. And I said, fuck that, I'll have another heart attack. <laughs> and it was like, he just, he went, he was. Did you ever read this book? Forth. I yeah. learned who it was, by the way. The, I'm going to call, call them out. Don't call them out. I'm going to call them out. No, don't call them out. I don't want to call them out. It's, I it, want to call them no, out. No, don't call them out. Uh, they're, they're feet people. They're not feet people. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> we got to call them no, out. They're, 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 feet feet they're not feet people. <laughs> <laughs> it was a funny post. It was, it was a funny, funny post. Did you, did you read the book, though? Did you read funny. Carlin's book? His whole Which thing? Which one? Brain Droppings? No, like his biography, his like his autobiography, biography that he like he wrote, but he had to help ghostwriting. Oh on no, it. no, I didn't even know that one. Unbelievable, just like amazing insight into the man. Because my dad, he played a ton of George Carlin on record, ton of Pryor, and unfortunately a ton of Bill Cosby nowadays. But back then, I mean, Cosby stuff was pretty revolutionary. And the the Carlin stuff that I didn't realize, and all that, all like the beginnings and everything, all the personal stories he tells about, you know, like at the end of the seventies, they were ready to just write off George Carlin, like that was it. He yeah. was he was left in the seventies. The eighties was going to be this new generation of comedy, and he went back and he just started writing and writing and writing and like gritting his teeth and doing this whole thing. His story. From his point of view, it's awesome. I can't wait. But is it a project where, same thing with Pryor, is it a project that, it, it's not a project worth doing to me unless you get somebody that is close enough. You have to. To the real person that yeah. we know. Yeah, and, you have to. and that's a tough thing. Did you see the uh, the Elton John Rocket yeah, Man trailer? Good. I thought Taron Egerton looks great, yeah. but when he sang, I wasn't. I, it wasn't evoking Elton John for me. I, yes, and I think it's a little tougher. That's kind of my point. How I opened with is that you've got to, you've got to be able to hit those the way that he delivered jokes. It was very similar to the way like you, you singing a song. Yeah. Because people don't realize that you can't just tell the joke. You got to hit the way he hit his jokes and the way he timed out his words and the way that he would maneuver the audience and manipulate the audience. He was he was. A master. And he was Yoda. Taron Taron's good enough to where I'm like, oh, you know, this is going to be great, yeah. even if it doesn't sound exactly like Elton John, because I wasn't at the Troubadour. I don't know what it sounded like live versus that. I've seen Elton John live in a huge arena, but with this, yeah. But I don't even need a lot of stage stuff from Carlin in the movie. Oof. You know, I I, 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 I don't. Oof. I really don't. That's yeah. like that's like watching a Muhammad Ali fight with no boxing. Yeah, I, a, a yeah. movie with no boxing. Muhammad Ali's got a very interesting story outside of boxing. He does, but there's a lot of boxing in his movie. All right, let me let me ask you this, Ellis. Get, uh, the screenwriter of Moneyball is going to write this movie. Yeah, so uh, what, So what yeah. do you think you're going to get from that? You're going to get some stand up. Yeah, you're yeah. going to get some of uh, what you're referring to, probably some deep stuff. Yeah, when some, I think of Moneyball, stuff. though, the first thing I think of is not the baseball sequences. Of course, right? That's but that movie right. wasn't necessarily about. 
just baseballs as much as. And I don't think this is going to be just about stand. I think it's no. going to be about somebody's life, uh, as it well, should how be. How much stand up be. do you when you say you don't need that much? Do you mean because there's not that? Mu- it's not like Muhammad Ali's entire movie is just fighting. There's just some, yeah. right? So I would, you're saying some. Yeah, I, I think that Moneyball is actually a good. I think that's a good reference point where the amount of baseball that's in there is great. Like the the Steve Jobs thing. The one with Fassbender? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Kind of disappointed me a little bit because it was just these speeches. Like, and I think they leaned too heavily into speeches and used them. It, it was a cool conduit to tell the rest of his life story, but yeah. I just kind of wanted to see his life story. Well, that movie was more of a Sorkin piece right. than it was, and I, and I loved it for that, right. but, it, but it wasn't more about his life. That was about more little events. I feel like we're the only two people in the room that watched him dying up here, which unfortunately got canceled. I don't yeah, know if you saw that. I did see that. Um, and they have Pryor in the show briefly at points, yeah. and then they have, they, but they never have Carlin. They in talked there. about him. That they was talk it. about <laughs> Carlin, but they don't say anything. And I thought the actor that played Pryor was fine, but he you never saw Pryor on stage. True. In that show. Yeah, but this is different. I know, I oh, no, I know. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Uh, who's uh, Lenny Bruce? He's in a Rent song. Lenny Bruce, Langston Hughes to the stage. He's in, he's in Mrs. Maisel. He's in Mrs. Maisel. Which a one lot. is he? I, did, I thought you loved that show. I do love this show. So, I don't, did you see mention my name TV. Did, in that show? Lenny Bruce? I, I've only seen the first five oh, episodes, yeah. but well, he's Lenny, Bruce, well, he's I know who he is. Twice. He's, he's the it. one she bails he's out? A, he bails yes. out. And then oh, at the very, that's Lenny Bruce? And he's the, a real person? Yeah, and at the very end. All the people in the show? No. No, but Lenny Bruce is at the very end of the series. He shows back up. He's a very famous stand-up? Lenny Bruce. like the the main most probably, I literally only know of him because Rent. If you chart it back, Lenny Bruce is probably the most influential comic of all, of all time. time wow. Because he was he was the first one. He broke all all the rules. He he was very raw on stage. Got arrested for shit that people do on so um, that, all the time. The FBI now. was That's investigating real. him. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Huh. It was all because real. at the time he was doing it was the the early to mid sixties. Look really how good, hot he is. Yeah, he, he oh, looks he like the a, guy in the in the movie. In the he show was a badass. Yeah, yeah. Got, he's hot too. There's a there's a movie that's that's about Lenny Bruce's life. Yeah. Called uh, called Lenny with uh, Dustin Hoffman playing Lenny Bruce. Yeah. Is the, it good? Yeah, yeah. His yeah. heroin heroin was his was his big problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was heroin. So, uh, but 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 Carlin idolized Lenny Bruce. Oh yeah, and and I think I think prior did as well. But mm-hmm. like the, he the, he was like the guy. He was he started he started what we know as stand up comedy today. Do you ever really meet uh, Carlin? Um, I never got I saw him in concert. I never got a chance to actually meet yeah. him. I met Robin Williams, which was great. You weren't there. You, I thought you were not no, a CPK. You, you met there. Carlin? Uh, he he. It was like it was like watching greatness walk by because I was sitting in the the Mitzi seats in the OR, and it the was what? it was on Mitzi Shore, had, who was the, who was the late great owner of the comedy store. She had like these particular seats that five she would seats sit in the in. back. In, at in the, the what? Show. In the original room, which is the smaller room. Operating we, we real, room. We, we do realize we, we've got to explain this. A little bit in. I was in the midst seats yeah. in the OR. Yeah. I'm yeah. literally yeah. picturing you in a hospital and some like. So it's Monday night and it's the potluck and, and Jeff Danis was hosting. Mm-hmm. And it, it's maybe 25, 30 people in the crowd scattered around. And it's like 8 o'clock. And I'm just sitting in the midst seats and. This guy walks by, and I look up, and I'm like, that's fucking George Carlin. Just walks right by. And this is maybe a year before he died. Yeah. And he went up to Dennis, and Carlin said... What's that? Uh, 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 Jeff Dennis. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, my buddy who was hosting the show, and he's like... He said something like, just want to let you know you're doing a great job. And oh. th- then he just kind of walked by. I think he was there Jealous. with his daughter, Yeah, I want to say, because Carlin's Brenda, daughter... Brenda Carlin, right? Yeah. And I think I met her, but it was just like, and, and I, I honestly, I don't need to meet a lot of people, and I don't regret that I didn't like run up to Carlin and try to shake his hand. Just seeing him walk by, I was like, it's enough. Wow, that's something. And so this, the you're thing a big that, fan of his, oh Carlin, <laughs> yeah, oh, like, yeah. yeah. So the next year, Gar- Carlin dies, and I'm in the back of the the comedy store that night. And, and whenever a, a comic like that of that level dies. You just feel the need to go to a comedy club. Yeah. You just feel yeah, the yeah. need. And I don't I can't remember if I had a spot that night that he died, but I think it was like a Tuesday or a Wednesday. I go to up to the comedy store and I'm hanging out in the back, the back porch. And Chappelle comes up. And you just had the feeling that a lot of con- Jim Norton came up yeah, yeah, that yeah. night cuz he was in LA. And I was talking I with him. Chappelle outside a little bit and Chappelle and I were just kind of shooting the shit and then I told him, "Yeah, it's a real bummer about George Carlin." He did not know George Carlin died. Oh wow! wow. So you broke the news. I broke to the news Chappelle. to him, yeah, and Jesus. his he just like he just sunk, and so we started talking about Carlin for a little bit, 
Yeah, dude, and, I, what a memory that is. Yeah, it yeah. was weird because it's like, it's just, even if you don't know the news, there's just like some sort of like homing beacon that says, hey, whoever you are, however famous you are, you probably should come up to a comedy club tonight because we lost somebody. He's Rushmore. It's, uh, right. He's yeah. a Rushmore comic. Yeah. Right. The Rushmore comics, my Rushmore comics are Lenny Bruce, Richard Pryor, George Carlin. Damn. <sighs> Those, then I got to You got to put me on the end? Not yet. Um, but Ro- Why Ro- did you take a deep Robin. breath? Robin, Robin Williams and Joan Rivers. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Who am I missing? There's four. Oh, There's four, four on Rushmore. I, I go. I was with the Five Horsemen. Uh, man, I did this last year and I put Rivers on there and I can't yeah. remember who else I put on there because I left somebody out. Prior uh, and Rivers for sure. Yeah. And then you'd have to leave Robin Williams out. I think I'm probably going to leave Robin out. Yeah. And yeah, put. Okay. I would put Rock up there. Chris Rock? Before Overall. I would put Robin up He's there. He's alive. Oh, well, then who else are you, who are you taking off? You're not putting Lenny you... Bruce up there? It's either it's either Lenny or Carlin Vine for that last spot. You're crazy. Lenny Bruce, <laughs> well, Lenny Bruce is the... We just learned who he was. He was the guy. He was the... I mean, like, I, I, George Carlin is... is to me, more my style of comedy. Yeah, but Lenny, you don't have a you don't have a Rushmore without without you don't have that style of comedy. You still you guys still got the old school ways, the comedy teams and the safe comedy. If it's not for Lenny, it, it, it's it, it's a tough call. But uh, if I ask you for your Mount Rushmore of pitchers, are you putting Walter Johnson on there? Because uh, nobody pitches without seeing Walter Johnson. That's different though. That's 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 pitching as opposed to baseball. The guy who the guy who who really who. Revolution is baseball. I mean, for the you can from what stand up comedy is today, Lenny Bruce invented that stuff. I'm putting Henry Youngman in instead of Lenny Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> you should. Anyway, so we're looking Caleb forward. To, we're looking forward to a George Carlin biopic. Um, Henny Youngman was great. But yeah. go around the table. Who would you like to see as Carlin? I, I have I've always leaned towards a Will Forte in that role, and I don't think that's right. But mm-hmm. I think Ken Knapsack would be better than Will Forte <laughs> in this particular role. No, it's yeah. so you got Hi, again, Ken. It's just like. Please check around your meeting seating area for any items you might have brought on board. Well, I might have brought my Arrowhead collection. I didn't, so I'm not going to look for it. It's like, it's like you just got to, it's the will. And the, the way that he just kind of sets himself in his stop. body motion, he's just like. Can you pull him up? Yeah. Who do check you, around your me- he's immediate seating area. Well, first of all, let's he's check around. Let's start with immediate seating Collins. area. Yeah, yeah. Seat. It's a goddamn seat. He's Rufus Check around your seat. And Bill and Ted's. Yeah. Yeah. You know that, Ross. No, I, I know who George Carlin uh, is. Like, like, he's like, they, all these terms, they don't make any sense. That when two planes almost crash, they called it near miss. It's not a near miss. It's, when you see two planes crash, you say, oh, look, they nearly missed. You know, he goes, it's a near hit. <laughs> yeah. goes, what age are they going to have him at? Uh, probably. You see him, at, uh, you see, he really popped when he was around 30, 35. That's when he was like super, yeah. super famous, like the, the rock star He's version. like the only only person I knew. Yeah. You turn like, it up a little of bit? Of the stand up. Land grabbers Listen to his and album. bomb throwers, folks. We're not happy. Mm-hmm. We're not happy Look unless we're dropping beds. bombs on some helpless civilian population that has no argument with us whatsoever. No argument with us whatsoever. We are bomb throwers. And when we're not dropping high explosives, when we're not dropping high explosives on some small nation that only has a marginally effective air force, then we're declaring war on something at home. We love to declare war on something at home, don't we? Anything we don't like about ourselves, we have to declare war on it. Do you think it should be? It. A can't comedian? Get rid of this war mentality from our public life. It's not we got a war necessarily, on but it would help. Yeah. I, well, no. <laughs> I think that it just again. You, I mean, not necessarily because you look at look at Mrs. Maisel, right? She she is she's able. To, she's not a comedian. She can pull it off. She she got the stage presence. A good actor can do it because he's going to be doing George's material. Yeah. You just got to be able to learn the material, do the material, hit the things. Because the other thing there that made me realize from that clip, because as he got older, he got very political. Yeah. And it was actually not my favorite stuff. He was very outspoken. He became a big – he was used to go on CNN and would talk. He would – he's very far on, on the left. Um, and that was – I actually liked his more silly – Stuff that he did in the beginning to where he could fire stuff in there. But they're going to cover a lot of that stuff because, again, when his wife died, he just went – I don't give a fuck. Anymore. Jamming in New like, York, I think in '91 or '92 is. I think it's still my. It was the first one I saw. And okay. It was probably my favorite one. Carlin and Carnegie is my favorite. Okay, I got a name for you. Yeah. Who's not a comic, but went to the comic store one time. Ben Foster. Oh, oh he maybe it looks it. Setting the bar at Ben Foster. Maybe I like. He's uh, got I, he's got some of the facial features, and you need somebody who's who's who can be of slight build. Yeah. Because the other person I was thinking who is a, a great comic is Andrew Santino, but he's such a He's got such a build. I, you can still do it, weight. 
But, but no, no, I mean, Santino's just like, he's got a big frame. Yeah. Much bigger Jewish? frame than Carlin. Uh, no, he was uh, Irish. Irish. So, uh, he was, grew up in New yeah. York from, in uh, Brooklyn? Yeah. I'm setting the bar at Foster and Santino. Yeah, I think he was Irish. Uh, double check that, but I think he was Irish. Um, Santino's got the... Uh, the irreverence that Carlson San, does. Yeah. Santino's, Santino's got it. the eyes. He, he's, he's got the eyes like yeah. that. If they don't cast Santino, he can coach Ben Foster. Yeah, yeah. so he was... Uh, didn't and he was great on I'm Dying Up Do you here. think there will be other uh, stand-ups in it that will be iconic, or you think yeah. that they'll steer yeah. clear yeah. from yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was, well, I mean, it was like you look at... when you If you would do a movie about like the Rolling Stones, you'd look at all the kind of musical bands that would pop up through, throughout that movie. Same Maybe. thing. Maybe I, you're gonna see, dude. You're gonna see Pryor. You're gonna see people. I mean, it's like this is a little like when we talk about Star Wars movies, though. And it's like, well, it's a Han Solo movie. So are you gonna see the other? Are you gonna see Darth Vader? Are you gonna see Jabba the Hutt? Maybe, but I never knew Carlin the same way that I that I looked at Pryor because Pryor seemed like a guy who just popped into. Carlin was popping into a lot of New York clubs. And so you're going to see comics that were in New York around that time more so than L.A. comics. But the L.A. the comedy scene moved to Los Angeles primarily once the comedy store opened and once Johnny moved the Tonight Show there. Right. So I just wonder what you probably see Robert Klein, probably see people like that. Yeah, I I hope that you see a Richard Pryor, and I think Justin Wade should be playing him. But the uh, shit, I had another point. Oh yeah, do you know that uh, three comics were all born in Peoria, Illinois? It's Pryor, okay. Carlin, Kinnison. Really? Yeah. Wow. wow. What the hell are they getting? The, that's crazy. It's yeah. called the Pure. In the water. Yeah. I, I think they literally they literally were born oh, like, like their families lived like two. That's insane. I didn't miles know, from I, each other. Really? I thought he was born in New York. I'm looking it up. Pryor. Sure. I think I Pryor think was that, born in New York. I actually I mean, think Pryor, that happens uh, more Carlin. often than you think. Not with that specific occupation. All right, but well, it says Manhattan, so maybe. <laughs> Yeah, he was born in New York. <laughs> Maybe he moved to Peoria. Yeah, he was when, born in New York. But I feel like when you when you grow up in a city that idolizes somebody because of where you're from, then it's easier, not easier, but you aspire to be like that because you know what kind of recognition you get. It's in like town. Pittsburgh and me. Yeah. But I th but again, I think that Carlin mm -hmm. that that movie's going to do a lot. I also think it's going to be a love story. I think it's going to be I think the movie's going to be primarily a love story between him and his wife and you'll see the How'd she die? I want to tell you cancer. Um, I don't know if that's when he was young. Well, Pryor was no, born not, too, not too young.